Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to Breast of Reb Seminar, Pashas Chai Isar. The Pasha speaks about the passing of Sora Imenu and that uh, she passed away from the aggravation that Yitzchak was almost sacrificed. That's the way Rashi brings it. The Medrash tells it that way. And uh, it starts off that Sarah, she was a hundred, she was twenty, she was seven, a hundred twenty-seven years old. Maya the Esrim Sheva Shanim. All right. And Rashi says a very interesting thing. He says Kulam Litova, all the years were good. Hey, wait a minute. She grew up as a relative of Avram Avinu back when he was thrown into the fire but she was already his wife then 90 years she was barren no children then she had to put up with Yishmoel's antics in the house right? and now she's got to put up with the fact that Yitzhak was almost sacrificed by God's will and all of these years 127 Rashi says they're all for the good they're all for the good because that was Sarah, that was Sarah's attitude. Her attitude is that whatever Hashem does is for the good. And that's how she got through all the trials and tribulations that she had to face. All right? Avram comes and he wants to bury her because he wasn't, he was coming back from the binding of Isaac. And uh, God promised him the land. And yet, it comes out that he has to buy the property where to bury Sarah. Hey, it was promised to him. But he didn't question God. He knew everything God does is for good. And therefore, he went into negotiations. He says, I would like to buy this cave. All right? Ephron was the guy who held the cave. And by him, he saw it as a cave. There was nothing there for him. And he would be happy to unload it. If someone offered him a hundred bucks, he'd have unloaded the cave for him. Avram came and offered him, said, I want the cave, and went up. He did have 400 talents of silver, which even the Hunt brothers would have problems uh, coming up with that kind of money. Avram Avino paid him in full 400 talents of silver, the Medrash says an interesting thing. It says there were three places in the land that nobody could argue belonged to the Jews. One is the Moaras HaMachpela, the cave of Machpela, because Avram paid in cash for it. The second place is Shechem, because Yaakov later on in Pashas Vayishlach bought the property. And the third place is the place of the Temple Mount where uh, David HaMelech paid cash for it, right? It's an interesting medrash because at each of these three places, you have the Arabs screaming louder than any other place that belongs to them. But whatever. But the point is that the land belongs to Avram and his descendants, and the land is ours and God willing, will have it. It'll all be made known publicly for everyone to know that the land is ours. They will relinquish any claim they have speedily in our time. Amen. Point is that Avram bought the cave. When he bought the cave, it says, all of a sudden it lit up. Buried in that cave was already Adam and Chava. Odom Marishan and Chava, where Odom Marishan, the Gemara says, the light of the sun was pale compared to the beauty and the shine that came from Odom Marishan. Avram Avinu saw it. He knew it was there. And that's why he was willing to put up the money for the cave. Eventually, the cave became the grave sites of four great tzaddikim, Odom Marishan and Chava, his wife. Avram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, and Yaakov and Leah. And it's called Machpelah because it's doubled. 
cave upon a cave, and that's where they're buried. And uh, it's a place of great prayer, right? Where Jews all the all the years have gone there, and the Jews have always all the years have gone to uh, pray in Maris Hamachpelah. All right. Then the scene shifts in the parsha to the shidduch of Eliezer, a city shidduch of Yitzchak, which Eliezer was sent by Avram Avinu to go and find the shidduch for Yitzchak Avinu, and that was Rivka. And uh, there's a lot of midrashim about this, about how it worked out. He, he left Israel, the land of Israel, where Avram was, on one morning, and by the afternoon, he was in Mesopotamia, which was a 10-day journey, right? And he, he got there in the afternoon, and he found Rivka right away, and he prayed. He saw her, how the way she was handling herself. She was all of three years old, but she was handling herself like a very modest and proper lady. So he said, Hashem, help me get the uh, proper girl for Yitzchak and he prayed and he got Rivka the Gemara says what would have happened if he got an Ill illegitimate child what would have happened if he got somebody who wasn't from Avram's family not according to the conditions that Avram laid down for him if that was the girl he said the girl is going to feed me, uh, help me drink, and help my flocks drink. So that's the girl. How do you know? Right? But this is the power of tefillah. And this is the power when a person puts his whole heart and soul and mind behind the prayer, all for the sake of Hashem, then the prayers will be answered. And Rivka came along, and she took care of him. Lavan came he wanted to kill Eliezer and steal everything. Eliezer said the name of God and he was suspended in midair. <laughs> Love him, couldn't touch him. He realized he can't touch him. He came down to earth and he stayed the night. He said, I want to go now. Let me go now. Let me take Rivka now. Rivka was all of three and they said, you know, uh, who knows what if she doesn't want this and that. Rivka said, I'm going to go whether you like it or not. Three-year-old girl, but she knew who she was. She knew she was destined to be the mother of Kal Yisrael. So she went. Now, this whole story, Rabbi Nachman points out a most amazing thing. Right? The Pesach says, Hashem says to, uh, Avram says to Eliezer, you go and take a girl from my family and bring her back her. And if she doesn't want to come, then you'll be free, exempt from my oath. Okay? The words that Avram used, V'im lo tovah isha lo leches acharecha. If the girl does not want to follow you, then you'll be free, exempt from my oath. The words V'im lo start with a vav and a lamid. And then there's two words, tova ho'isha, the woman will want. That's what it means, because it's cut off from the low. Loleches acharecha, to go after you, to follow you, it's also a lamid and an aleph. So the aleph and the lamid and the lamid and the vav make up the word elul. Make up the the first letters of the word make up the word Elul the last month of the year before Rosh Hashanah Rabbi Nachman says that a person who has difficulties in keeping peace in the home because he and his wife don't get along together right you need the concept of Elul which means tshuva which means repenting before Hashem and you need the concept of guarding the bris guarding the covenant this is what we need if you want to keep peace in the house. You have to keep the covenant and you have to repent and try and turn to Hashem in anything and everything that is happening to you. 
It's an amazing teaching, and this is what the Rebbe is teaching, Rabbi Nachman is teaching us about the power of Shalom Bayis, that it can happen. It can happen if you have Kedusha Sabris, if you guard the covenant, and if you are always turning to Hashem and bringing Hashem into the equation. The Pasha ends off with Avram marrying Keturah. Keturah was Hagar, right? His uh, first wife, the uh, concubine. She uh, she was brought back to Avram to remarry. She had more children and whatnot. Those were the descendants of Avram. All of them are Midian and Epha and Epha. These are all people that parallel Yishmoel when it comes to the destruction of the Jews. The interesting thing is that the last posik of the Parsha says that Yishmoel al kol echov nofal. He will fall upon all his brethren. Right? In Parsha's Lech Lecha, there's a verse that says he will dwell among all his brethren. And here it says he will fall among all his brethren. All right, so the Medjush picks up on it, and it says, during the lifetime of Avram, he will dwell. After Avram passes away, he will fall. All right, fall means he will like fall spread out, but it means he will actually fall. And then the Medjush says, right now, he will dwell. But when Moshiach comes, he will be completely vanquished and conquered and fall down completely. There will be no trace, no remnant of the uh, evil of Yishmoel that's happening. And the Balaturim shows, because next week's parsha starts off, Ve'ele todos Yitzchok ben Avraham. When it comes the time that Yitzchok ben Avraham, or the Jewish nation, ascends on high, then that will be the end of the Israel nation. For us today, it means we can see that no matter what happens in the world, still the land of Israel is growing and going. It's going forward. It's it's improving. It's it's always progress, right? So we can see as we progress, there's less and less of Yishmoel. All they are is now fighting and killing each other. You don't see them as any kind of peaceful nation that does any kind of uh, positive commitment or contribution to the world. So what we have to do is pray to Hashem that we do the right thing. We always do the right thing. And, and God willing, Be'ez Hashem, will see the salvation of the Jewish nation and the defeat of all our enemies. Amen.